Well, that didn't take long. As the coach comes from Illinois, so do the players, correct? Well, we weren't sure if that was going to happen. Then we got confirmation. We've got a special guest on this episode. Also on this episode, we're going to be talking about potential other transfers out of West Virginia. But first and foremost, we're going to be talking about prospective visitors, which is happy news. We're going to start with happy news today. Welcome to Hoops from the Hills. My name is Mountaineer Paul. Coos is at basketball practice right now with his with the girls, so wasn't able to make it. Um, I did not know that, um, or if he told me, I forgot. So apologies for that, guys. But I do have a guest host. This is a guy that broke the news. He he, he has been so gracious uh, in, in sharing uh, news with me, and uh, really appreciate him for that and everything he's done. Uh, this is Dante Furco. Now, here he is, and he is the director of Fox and ABC Channel 20 in Illinois. So he runs two different stations, which is pretty wild. Uh, there it is right there, director of Fox Illinois and ABC Channel 20. So welcome to the show, Dante, and, and uh, what a heck of a job you did breaking that news, man. Yeah. Um, no, I, pr I appreciate, appreciate that you. for you. I appreciate you having me. I'm sorry. I uh, I had to channel my inner Big East days. I had to wear my uh, Syracuse orange uh, hat. Oh, if I didn't even realize it, but I had to wear it. A um, little bit of a budding rivalry back in the day between uh, Syracuse and uh, West Virginia. But no, excited to be on. I mean, uh, it, our kind of worlds colliding a little bit with uh, Illinois and West Virginia. Uh, kind of becoming a, a little bit one in the same with uh, kind of some guys possibly going over there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's get into that just a little bit. You know, you and I were texting today. Um, I appreciate you for answering me. Um, we talking about a couple of different things, and I called you right before you released the Hansberry news. And um, can you get into? I mean, obviously, we don't want you to tell your sources or anything like that. But can you get into? just the why and how of this and just kind of connect the dots for everybody. Yeah. So, I mean, first let's, we can take it back all the way back to a little bit of uh, maybe October, November when sincere Harris, um, sincere Harris decided to redshirt um, great defensive player last year, helped them a lot. He, and he redshirted this season and there were so many question marks throughout the year from the media, from the fans, Will he be back? And then kind of fast forward a little bit to this past, well, maybe like a week and a half ago, where rumors started to circle about Chester Frazier leaving. And then right before that, though, from what I'm told, Sincere Harris posted his return. He tweeted a video of him practicing and said, year two, ILL. Um, from everything I'm told, that was his post that, like, I'm coming back. Um, and then the ne very next day, the rumors of Chester Frazier came out and then I heard right away. It was true. He's going to West Virginia. And then right away, I heard Sincere Harris may be entering the transfer portal, uh, waited a couple days, waited to see, you know, where that went. And then I knew for certain kind of let him be the one to announce that. Obviously that's a, of his job. But um, then, I mean, it was, those two are, those two are tight. Every time I'd watch Sincere practice before a game, since he's red shirting, it, it was always him and Frazier. Always him and Frazier. And Frazier's a great was a great defensive player back in the day, and still a great defensive minded coach. And that's that's Sincere Harris. Uh, maybe a Pat Bev kind of comparison. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but like he he's going to be a dog on the court. Like he is a fierce player. He's going to be the guy slapping the floor. He's going to be the guy getting that team fired up. And his I will say his attitude never changed throughout the year. That man was dialed in whether he was playing or not. He was he was dialed in. But right away I heard that he would be possibly going to West Virginia. And then a couple – I don't know if I tweeted out yesterday or two days ago. Um, I heard he, he was taking his visit to West Virginia this weekend. Um, I mean, he even confirmed it. He retweeted the tweet. So, I mean, that that's a certain um, – Yeah. I think he's making it very known that 
he wants to uh, take his talents to West Virginia. He's retweeting West Virginia stuff. He's retweeting fan posts. I mean, he's also responded. He wants Illinois and West Virginia to meet up next year in like a non-conference game. Um, yeah. I doubt you see it happen, but he responded to right. a tweet. I think from what I'm told, um, I don't want to get people too, too excited. I was told in quotes, it's very likely. It's very likely he ends up in uh, West Virginia. I'd honestly be surprised if he leaves Morgantown this weekend without a commitment. I, I would honestly be shocked. Um, and then let's move over to Amani. Uh, we didn't see a whole lot of him uh, this past year because Illinois had size when it comes to their seniors. I mean, Coleman Hawkins, I think he's 6'11", maybe. Um, and just a dog. And then you have Quincy Gurrier, who I think was like 6'10", maybe 6'9". And then you had Dane Danger. There wasn't a lot of wiggle room for Amani to get in. But when he got in, you, you saw a good player. I mean, he's somebody who can hold his own down low. He can – I think he has some work to do defensively. But uh, right when Frazier announced that – or once the rumor started swirling with Frazier, I heard right away, Amani is likely going to join – Sincere Harris when it comes to entering the transfer portal. And then, but once he entered the transfer portal, I heard it could be 50 50 on West Virginia if in terms of going and following Frazier. Because I mean, he's a very highly recruited kid out of high school, out of Maryland, I believe. A really good player. Illinois was able to land him. Um, but I, from what I'm told, he's going to take his visit to West Virginia maybe later in the weekend, if not like Monday. Um, I think it's going to go back to back with sincere, um, but could be at the same time. I'm not 1000% sure. Um, but those two, I, I know sincere wants them both to team up at West Virginia. So, um, it could happen. I don't think Amani's as much as a certain as I think sincere is because I'm not, I think Amani is going to get looks elsewhere, anywhere he can go and play. I think he's going to want to, uh, he's a really good player. Uh, I think he still may be able to grow, and I think he's like 6'9", 6'10". So, I mean, I think that's a good thing. And, man, if learning behind uh, the guys I mentioned in Coleman Hawkins and Quincy Gurrier, I mean, that's – taking that into any locker room is going to be a, it's gonna be a good thing for uh, any team that gets him. But I think West Virginia is definitely high on his list. For sure. And, and uh appreciate all that, man. That was a lot of really good info. Um. Don't forget to like the video, guys. 103 of you guys in here right it now. Uh, should continue to fill up as we go. Um, don't forget to follow Dante Furco on X, guys. He, he's got a really active account over there. Uh, but it may not always be West Virginia stuff, but right now, I mean, you know, you never know who can transfer out of there. Or, I mean, there's a, there's a good reason. to. He's pretty plugged in, so it's a good reason to follow him over there. So make sure you guys go and do that. Uh, over on X, if you can open up another window while we're doing this. Uh, we had a few people welcome you into the chat I saw. What's Thank up, you. Dante? Thanks for coming. So uh, people were welcoming you in, even though you wore the Syracuse hat. You know, <laughs> I, uh, So I appreciate you for that, man. Um, so a lot of info there to really digest. Uh, so, you know, I watched film on both these guys. I really do believe Sincere is probably the closest to being ready to play in the Big 12. Oh, out of the two, you know, uh, the Big 12 is an extremely physical conference. That's what it's known mm -hmm. for, you know. Um, and, and especially when you get down to the bigs and to the post. Last year was kind of an anomaly for the Big 12. We usually have much better post play. Um, so I'll be curious to know how he adjusts to that because – Looking at him on film, it's certain that he gets knocked off his spot quite a bit mm -hmm. while he's in Illinois. Um, it certainly needs to gain some weight. Fortunately for him, West Virginia has probably a top five uh, health and nutrition uh, facility in the country. It's what they when, – when you're a program like West Virginia, you have to invest in other things to make yourself separate from people. And so we've, we've got all kinds of – we've got cryo chambers, the whole deal there. Um, every time somebody gets up, every time somebody goes to lunch, they're always asking them what they ate. Uh, they do a really good job with it, man. And we, we see people turn, you know, when Bob Huggins was there, obviously changing bodies was kind of what they had to do to even be able to play for him. And I think a lot of that's still in place. And, and luckily, 
for these players and for these coaches, everything Bob Huggins built is still in place. You know, one of the best practice facilities in America. He raised millions of dollars to build. Um, so we're really lucky. And it's a huge selling point, you know. And, and then our trust is always in place. And thankfully, we're, com we're, we're, we're very competitive there. And uh, while we can't meet out the Kansas and the Kentuckys of the world, all, you know, or Arkansas, uh, we can't compete with, uh, you know, most tier two and tier three teams. So we're lucky. We're lucky. Um, interest really quick before we talk any more of the players, I did want to get some stuff for our, our fans here on coach Frazier. You mentioned him a little bit there. Can you mention his time as a player? You said he was a, he was a defensive specialist and you say he likes to use that. And that's, is that all he, does he ever recruit anything but defensive players or is that kind of what he gravitates towards? I'm not 100% sure, but when it comes to, you know, who on the staff is necessarily recruiting those guys like the Sincere Harris or Amani Hansberry or Jace Butler, who just recently decommitted for Illinois, he's kind of got that focus on some of those uh, defensive guys. But, I mean, people here love Frazier. Like, they love the guy he is off the court. They love the guy he is coaching. They loved him at Illinois, I believe I'm trying to find the exact year. So he was here from 2006, 2009, playing for Illinois. And he, man, people, people love him. He was a, the guy you wanted down the stretch. Maybe he wasn't going to get you 20 points, but he was going to get you two steals and create havoc for that all American on the other side of the court. Uh, when it comes to Frazier. So he he's definitely somebody you want. People, the players respect him. Um, I know I mentioned to you, in terms, especially for Illinois, like when you're recruiting and you're getting recruited by a guy who's succeeded at that university, like it's, it, it's an easy selling point. So that's going to be something that will have to change when he goes to West Virginia since it's not his alma mater. But it's I could see some recruits that he's talked to make maybe add West Virginia to his list. So he very well respected. He was a good player at Illinois, very loved. And I believe he went to uh, coach at Virginia tech before where he kind of built his, he did. some of his stepping stones before going to Illinois and um, a yeah, very well respected, very good player. And uh, West Virginia is definitely getting a good, a uh, good addition in Frazier. Well, he's definitely learned under two really good Illinois coaches and Bruce mm -hmm. Weber and Brad Underwood when he was at K state. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, so he brings that, you know, and, uh, I, I was looking at it. He may have even, I uh, was, was he, was he a part of that Natty thing that you guys had with Weber? Mm. Was that before his, or was that so talking about the final four run? Yeah. Yeah. Or the final four. Um, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting that team didn't somehow didn't win the championship. Yeah, I'm trying to say I I don't believe so because I think that was 0405 when Darren Williams was there. Yes, um, it is. Yeah. So God, it, I'm trying to think. I know they were like the five seed uh, that year. I think he just missed it, but I mean he's he's just as loved as those guys from that Final Four run. Right. Um, I think but, that was the Dwayne Wade type team as well, wasn't it? Or maybe it was the Coach Cal. Uh, Memphis team as well that was there. I think in the Kansas team. I think good that game. might have been the Final Four. It was a good one. Uh, so how old, how old are you, man? Because uh, you're awfully young to be running two different stations. So I'm 23. I'm about to turn 24 in a month. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's a stressful thing. It's kind of all into one. So it's basically a duopoly. Um, we all it's it, – we've used the same work for the two stations – um, it's just on two different networks kind of thing, um, gotcha. but it's two completely I, shows. So it's, it's still a lot, a lot of work, but I guess I'm young. I'm getting my uh, foot in the door and um, it's a, yeah. uh, it's a good time. I mean, co covering, it's kind of my dream covering uh, college athletics and maybe pros one day or go back home. I'm from Syracuse. So maybe go back home. Cover, I could uh, hear it. Syracuse. <laughs> you definitely don't have a Northern accent. No. <laughs> you know, uh, which I'm sure I don't have. I mean, I'm, I probably sound like I'm from West Virginia, but <laughs> yeah. so uh, don't forget to. You guys always remember there's a super chat button down below if you want to donate to the channel, help the channel out in any way, shape, or form. It's always there if you guys want to use it, or if you have a question for Dante at all. 
Uh, Silver Mark wants to know, Dante, why do you think the coach left Illinois for West Virginia? So I'm working on getting the, the – I think there's a bigger answer to that that I'm currently working on but don't have all the answers to. But I think I, no. I think at the end of the day it comes down to um, Frazier wanting to be a head coach, like him wanting to get to that position, and he wasn't going to be named an associate head coach, which, which is a big step up from just an assistant coach. I'm not sure exactly sure. in terms of the logistics of – what an associate head coach does, but being able to go to West Virginia and be named an associate head coach, that's maybe the final step for him to become a head coach at a division one program. So if he can go there, really flourish and have more of a, uh, what's the word kind of like where his, where his credibility is recognized kind of thing. And he's able to really just flourish. I think he could, uh, I think it's a final step for him becoming a head coach. So I think at the end of the day, that's the big reason. Um, but it's just – it's it's very interesting, and I don't want to say alarming necessarily that he's leaving his alma mater, but it's definitely raised some flags with fans. Everybody's kind of confused. Yeah, I can see that. Well, you know, um, I and I'll talk to you off camera about it, but I had some source – I had a K-State source reach out to me. Um, about some things at K-State before he left the Bruce Weber squad and all that. Um, I'll talk to you about that. I, it's not something I can see on camera, but um, it's some interesting stuff I'll share with you. Uh, Shaggy of West Virginia said, thanks for coming on, Dante, but you got to burn the hat. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I like the hat. It's like my – it's good colors. Honestly, I didn't so even what realize you think about, I hopped on that I was wearing the Syracuse hat. I just grabbed a hat. What do you think about Jerry McNamara getting that coaching job? I, I, he's been waiting for it. I heard, I yeah. heard last year he wanted, he wanted out when he was not named the head coach of Syracuse. He wanted out, but there just wasn't the opportunity at the time. Um, so he, I mean, good for him. He's been waiting a long time. That man is, I mean, the the, it's not talked about enough. The good recruits he brought into Syracuse, um, maybe not recently, but like in the early 2010s, like he brought in some really good recruits, like some four, four stars that were just really good players. A lot of good shooters he brought in. I mean, he was a part of the Syracuse national championship team, our one national championship with Carmelo. Um, good for him. I mean, he already landed Peter Carey, who's a, uh, he's probably like six, six, eight, kind of a stretch four. Um, I think, I don't think he'll have a problem recruiting at that level. Um, but it's it's his stepping stone to get in, into a power five. So, I mean, good for him. What's up, gang caught Chuck? Good to see you in here, brother. Uh, somebody said something else. What was it? Oh, uh, he said, precise underscore 2K wants to know, Dante, can Sincere have a top 10? Can he be a top 10 guard in the Big 12? Does he have that kind of potential? Uh I think I think so. I think defense is especially in college. I don't think maybe in the NBA it's appreciated as much, but Sincere's defense can definitely put him up there. I think you have to wait to see um I guess who's in the Big 12 this year because I mean just landed oh. AJ Store who might knock Sincere out, but I think I don't know the roster makeup necessarily at West Virginia, but Sincere's a guy if 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 needed to, he can he, he can be that day one starter. Like he, he's right. Re- I think he's ready. He's still got a lot to learn, but he's ready. So, I mean, naming, calling him a top 10 guard is not necessarily out of the realm of possibility, but he, I will say needs to work on scoring a little bit. Um, just to kind of make him a two dimensional player. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I would not rule him out of being a possible top 10 guard, especially shooting guard. Um, but in terms of guards overall, definitely could, uh, be in his future. What did you say about AJ Store? AJ Store committed to Kansas today. Oh yeah, you had me really <laughs> excited for a second. I thought you said he committed to us. Oh no, no I was he, like, what just happened? Yeah, he committed to uh, uh, Kansas. I think he still technically has his name in the NBA draft. Um, it didn't really yeah. sound like it from his po- from the post, but he technically declared for the NBA draft. Um, I'm not sure how that works when you still 
uh, have your name in the transfer portal, but uh, he's committed to Kansas yeah. for now. Illinois was on his list. Everybody thought he was going to Illinois, so I was kind of shocked today when I saw that. Right. JDK said uh, Dante with the Rizzo shirt. <laughs> I'm not even a Cubs <laughs> fan, honestly. Um, I got that as a gift a while ago. I also, I'm a Yankees fan, so it kind of all works um, since Rizzo's yeah. a Yankee now. But uh, I do love Rizzo, but I'm not a Cubs fan. I'll root for them. I don't care. But, uh, yeah, I got a Rizzo, some type of baseball, Illinois baseball jersey, don't know who. There's a women's basketball one up there. And then Illinois went to the ReliaQuest Bowl last year. Didn't go to a bowl game this year. but So – I like Leo Cole. You're asking the question: do, do, do we believe if Harris could be another Javon Carter comp? I think that's a, that's a pretty good comp. But Javon Carter won two Big Twelve play, Defensive Player of the Year awards as a guard. Mm-hmm. It's extremely hard to do, and it's you know that's in this you know that that's in the you know the two, between 2015 and 2021. You know, like the Big Twelve was seriously the best conference in basketball during those years, or Definitely in the conversation, you know, one or number one, number two during those Kansas runs, you know. Um, so he did that against really good teams. Um, but I, I mean, on tape, Sincere Harris absolutely has a lot of ability. Javon Carter, you know, he really was, and that's the reason he's contributing so much to the Bulls right now. Uh, he's the first into, he's the first to show up and last to leave because. He's just under. He's not as talented as some of the more talented players. So he made up for that, you know. And I, I think Harris is the kind of kid that can do that. And he has, listen, he 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 has the potential to be a better offensive player. I've watched him his tape. He's got a he's got a decent looking jump shot. It definitely needs tinkered with. And he's got a layup package, Dante. I mean, he does. He's got a lay, layup package. I don't oh, know yeah. about his. He can dunk it. I don't know about his. Yeah. I don't know I about his a, total finishes, but, I mean, he's got two or three different finishes that I've seen him do. I'll have to look back. I know somewhere on my Twitter I got some slams. by Oh, in the Kansas game, he basically dunked on uh, Hunter Dickinson. I'll have to find that yeah. video. I'll put it out. People enjoy it. He uh, slammed it down. Not necessarily on him, but he was being defended by Hunter Dickinson in transition. He, uh, he slammed it home. So he, he could throw it down. Uh, Dante, this is Coos from Coos's Corner and Hoops from the Hills. This is my partner on the show. What's up, Coos? Uh, What's up, Dante? Coos, this is Dante. He is the – hold on, I have to go back and read it again. <laughs> the director of Fox Illinois and, and a, Fox Illinois slash and ABC Channel 20. Awesome. Yeah. Nice to meet so you, he's Dante. So he's, he's got two. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, man. I had a, I had a, bas- I coach a, I coach a girls basketball team, and we had practice tonight. So No problem. And I had to grab dinner. <laughs> little, little, grab some some of the Lord's chicken on the way home. No, I get it. I, right when uh, we're done here, eventually, I'm gonna order a uh, hot chicken sandwich from Dave's Hot Chicken. I don't know if you guys there have you that in West Virginia yet. It's growing. We do not. It is good. At least not where I'm at in West Virginia, anyway. Yeah, it's it's growing. It's it, it was small, and now it's starting to pop up in random places. Cool. Yeah. Are, 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 do you live in Illinois? Yeah. So I'm right in Champaign. I, the campus okay. is probably the campus of Illinois is probably five minutes away from my apartment. Um, gotcha. So, yeah, I'm, I'm right here. Uh, from from Syracuse, New York, though. You, right. I heard you say that. I, I did listen to a few minutes of the show while I was eating. Do, did you Do you guys have Chick-fil-A there? Yes, we do. Okay. I figured. Yep. I uh, I got to spend the summer in Danville. Mm. Once. <laughs> yep. That, that's, about, that's about 40 minutes from here for me. Yeah. Yeah, I yep. uh, had a buddy that was in the Air Force, and uh, apparently they have an incredible VA there in Danville, so mm-hmm. that's why he was living there. Yeah. What's up, Coos? Not much, man. I uh, I didn't get to hear a whole lot about <clears> – <throat> I did hear the question about why would, uh, you know, Coach Frazier come to West Virginia and leave his alma mater, so that was – uh, that was an interesting answer. Um, yeah, that's what we're trying to. That's what I'm trying to yeah. figure out. Well, I mean, anyway. the, everything I've heard. I mean, I've heard multiple things. Obviously, some of it I can can't share, but um, but yeah, some of it. I mean, he, he's getting closer to home, you know, by being from yeah. the DC area too. I think that might play a role in it. Yeah, it and definitely then, and, did. I mean, there, there's then, a whole and, bunch of factors. Right. And like yeah. you said, you know, wanting to move up, and 
you know, be a head coach one day and the associate head coach is kind of the next progression from that. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's one more box he can check off on his resume, right? Yeah. But we're glad to have him. He's, he's great. We are, uh, you know, and, oh, sorry, buddy. So I was, I've been arguing a little bit with some, some Illinois fans on Twitter, so no offense. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Uh, Dante, do you need to bounce, man? Do you need to give me? I mean, I, I, I've, I've got some time. We can, if there's anything else, okay. I can uh, help with. I, I I can answer that question. Um, well, they don't have somebody hired yet in terms of replacing Frazier for Illinois. Okay, um, I've heard Orlando Antigua Antigua thrown around a little bit. I think he was at Kentucky, maybe. Uh, former Illini coach, um, if I'm mistaken. Um, but he has. Already, it's already been announced he's not returning to Kentucky. So I think. It's a perfect fit, kind of, if he's without a job and looking. I heard Illinois is mutually interested from some of our local reporters here. Um, that there's mutual yeah. interest on both sides. So that might be a connection for Illinois in terms of replacing Frazier. Nice, nice. Uh, now, there's been some, con I don't want to say controversy, but people argue, and it's really a dumb thing to argue. It really is. People are saying, well, he wasn't even our first assistant. You know, he was like our fifth assistant down the line. Really, where, where where did he land on that on that stack? I, I doubt he was last. Mm, that's a great question. So I'm trying to think of maybe the, the, the pecking order. So, or maybe it wasn't even maybe he didn't even describe the pecking order. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to pull up the uh, because I will say, and he's probably like three or four because. I know Brad Underwood's son has been making his way up the ladder. Um, and then you have Jeff Alexander. And then probably, I, I wouldn't put Underwood's son up at first, but he's definitely up there. Um, but Alexander, uh, you had Tim Anderson. And then Tim Anderson and uh, Fraser are probably – Right there. So, like, two or three, I would say. I don't think he was kind of the second in command. And I think that's why, you know, he wanted to go to a spot where maybe he could be the second in command. Right. That makes sense. I think people acting like he was a crappy coach after he's gone is what people were ag aggravated about. You know what I mean? No. And At least I from think, our side. Yeah. And I think, too, a lot of people I've seen throw around, like, Oh, uh, you know, Illinois gave up a 30 0 run to UConn. Like, and Frazier's mainly in charge of that defense for the most part. Like, is he really amazing? Like, but it's honestly, you can never throw out stats when you're talking about any team playing against UConn. It's just, no, they're in a whole nother world. But I, I will say, Illinois' defense wasn't amazing this year. I mean, they gave up maybe 90 to FAU, 90 to Penn State. Um, but there were some games where they looked really good defensively, um, some of those tournament games against Iowa State. So there's definitely games where, like, man, Frazier is doing a really good job with this defense, and especially bringing over Sincere and – well, possibly bringing over Sincere and Imani to West Virginia. He's got two good defensive players that can make an impact right away if they decide to go to West Virginia. Right. Yeah. You know, that's a great point. And honestly, your personnel, and especially when you got to the tournament, was definitely offensive. Or, I mean, to me, you guys were a really good offensive team. Oh, yeah. I think so so I think I think Brad just leaned into that, you know. Uh, sometimes you, you just have to pick pick your poison. And, and which one are you going to hang your hat on? You can play a slow style and rely on defense, or you can pick it up and play offense. And choose your spots. Yeah, they really relied they on that offense this year. I think they were ranked maybe yeah. three. It was up there, somewhere in the top five in terms of offensive efficiency, which I is mean, complete one hundred and eighty from Brad Underwood's past. You know yeah. what I, mean? <laughs> I mean, having Terrence Shannon averaging twenty points, Marcus Domask averaging fifteen, yeah. Coleman will get you ten, yeah. Quincy will get you eight, and then yeah. there's a bunch of other guys contributing. They, they they could score, and especially after Terrence Shannon Jr. came back from his suspension, it was. 30 pieces, like, every night. No like who's You were pooping. <laughs> this is what he said. I didn't Mark's, say got this, Mark's got this crazy obsession with poop for some reason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> does, 
does Harmani? Uh, I hope I said his name right. I've read a couple different things on him. Does he? What was? What's his true position? Because I, I read one thing that said he was a small forward, and I've read others that said he was a four. What, I don't think he he's a, a small forward. What is forward. Yeah, I, it, it's tough. I've been I've been asking myself this question for the last day in terms of how he fits in a new system. In terms of what, if he's a four, is he a five? I definitely don't think he's a three. I think he's too big for that, and I don't okay. think he can space the floor enough to right. be a three. How so well does he shoot? To, how well does he shoot it? The, the three. Honestly, I don't know if he shot one. I'm trying to think back specifically. I, I don't see. Him, I see he makes a couple. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. I mean, he's not the person, like, he's not going to stretch it out as, like, a stretch four. But if he needs to shoot, he'll shoot. I mean, um, he's 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 good. I would say he's a four, but if he has the makings to be a five. Like, I, I, I would say a four. I would say a four. Gotcha. Into that power forward. Yeah, we don't have – West Virginia doesn't have any bigs right now. So, I mean, we – both of our big, we only had two bigs. Well, three. Well, I guess you could technically say we had three. Two of them graduated, and one's transferring. So, yeah, I will say, um, as a Syracuse fan, I love love Jesse Edwards. I know he's done now. Lo- I know he battled injury a good yeah. amount. From, if I remember correctly, this year, but I love, yeah. I love Jesse Edwards. He had, we he, did he too. Just, he was very, he was very reliable at Syracuse, especially his. High character. His senior year, I think. Yeah, senior year because then he played grad year West Virginia. Senior year with Syracuse. I mean, he was he was good. Like he started to really rebound well. He was scoring. I think if he would have been on Syracuse this year, like they could have been possibly a tournament team. That's what they lacked was a center. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I admit, but the we, we couldn't compete nil wise. So uh, yeah, we gave him a million dollars. Yeah, that's what I heard. And Syracuse was not gonna, especially after Syracuse lost their big, uh, their big NIL donor. They they weren't landing Edwards. Well, oh, they lost the donor. Oh yeah, big time. Like well, a billion, to... like a mil, multi millionaire donor. And uh, wow, yeah, it's 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 not ideal, but they're still doing well without him. Um, I mean, they just got Kyle McCord from uh, Ohio State for football. So, I mean, and uh, that more was, than him, they got a bunch of players in football. Which we, I'm telling you, Syracuse could be on the map again next year. Not not like an, I'm talking I, I think not so. about playoffs, but competing at the top of the ACC could be. I mean, they got a really good offense. Uh, they brought they brought in like eight different Georgia guys that are all like four star recruits. Uh, that came James Hurd Jr. Remember that name? <laughs> oh yeah, he James did Hurd Syracuse, Jr. Didn't he? Sure enough, did yeah. I'm a he, huge we were fan really we, we were really high on him, man, and. Uh, we hated to see him leave. Four star player. Yeah. Who? What's uh, his name? James. James Hurd Jr. Jr. What? What? Uh, I do. I think I do know yeah. what you're talking about. What is he? Why we pass receiver? rusher? Oh, pass oh, rusher. yes, 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 yes. Yep. He's probably already been making plays. I didn't check on it. There's He's spring games this practice. weekend uh, for Syracuse. Our spring game here at Illinois is on Saturday, uh, as well. Yeah, West Virginia's is the the following Saturday. Uh, uh, we got a super. You got it. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. That's what I was going to address. Uh, Civil Mark West Virginia says he, he gave us a $10 donation to send Dante a WVU hat. I can never. It's, it's a good hat. I like this hat. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that hat, man. Just, <laughs> hey, everybody be nice to Dante, man. Come on. He's a guest. Be nice to our guest. They're not – West Virginia's uh, not – Well, when did West Virginia leave, leave the Big East? 2011, I believe. Yeah, because it, right it was a little before Syracuse did. So I, I think we're far enough removed, but I will say Buddy Beheim to drop some buckets on West oh, Virginia gosh. back in 22. Buddy Beheim. Maybe. Yeah. That was a good, yeah. that was a fun time. Jesse Edwards had a good game too. Oh, Quincy Urie might have been on that team too. It's a you good know. time. So, Josh, I like this question, man. Does the breeze? Prefer a big that's more uh, rim running, like Jesse, or one that's more of a stretch five. He wants a he wants a guy that gets a big that can make shots, similar to Big Z that just went to Arkansas, or the kid Avila from from uh, who everybody wants, obviously from uh, Indiana State. Um, that's what he wants. He wants a big that can score all around the rim uh, and also make shots, um, according to according to what I've been told. So. Um, that's what he wants, man, and I think that they're gonna they're gonna go until they find it. You know, I don't know where they're gonna find it or how or what, but they're in the portal, 
and they just offered a couple new guys to gay, uh, but not bigs, but kid from his really good player from Missouri and a really good player from Jackson State. So we could probably talk about that after Dante apparently, pops out or if he apparently pops he out. likes guards because that's pretty much all he's offered with the with a couple of exceptions. <laughs> well, it's you know it's the most important position really. It's not I, Nemo. I, I, somebody's I got, somebody's it's, got a rebound. <laughs> I will be. Curious. Yeah, but you gotta have guards for it to field a team. You know, you gotta have it's bigs a, too. But I know I'm just it, impatient. It's another guard, but I know uh, we talked about this a little beforehand. But oh possibility yeah, yeah. Of Chase Butler. That oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but like he decommitted because just I mean I'm not I'm not 100 sure. Don't quote me on this, but his decommitment came like the same day that it was kind of put out there that Chester Frazier was leaving. Frazier recruited him. He's a good guy. Wouldn't be surprised if West Virginia gets thrown onto his list. I think he's got a bunch of really good options. That's nothing to discredit West Virginia, but like he's going to have so many options. So I don't think it's necessarily a certain, and he hasn't had a year under Frazier to kind of build that relationship like sincere right. or money, but it's definitely a possibility. I mean, to you build those relationships with those re- those guys that recruit you and uh, sometimes he's from California. When, yeah. He's like, I think he's out yeah. there. I forget. Yeah. But he's good from everything I read on him, especially once he committed, we ran a bunch of stories on him. Like he's a, he's a good player and he can grow yeah. too, to be like a forward possibly. That'd be nice. Somebody made a good comment. They said, you don't need three bound if you don't miss. <laughs> so I said, That's fair. <laughs> Unless the yeah. other team misses, get, get guys to, get guys to make shots, and you don't have to worry about it. But he is big on defensive rebounding. Defensive rebounding is actually one of Coach DeBreeze's biggest keys. Uh, so I'm sure he's going to bring some bigs in. I, I have no doubt. And Sincere's a guard that can rebound because he's not afraid to r- jump in with the big man. Like he's not afraid to run down the paint and grab an uh, offensive or defensive rebound. I think. If all things go well with uh, Sincere Harris and the West Virginia this weekend, I think it's a he's someone to be really excited about. And he loves the like where whatever fan base he's going to play, and he loves he'll love them. And good, I think he'll yeah, he's already he, yeah he's already been tweeting stuff out about West Virginia. Yeah, already. yeah, we were talking about that before. Yet. That, that, that's why I'd be shocked if yeah. he doesn't end up uh, a Mountaineer. Uh, let's see, let me get this comment off the screen here. Yeah, we do need a Jerry McNamara, Jonathan. You got that right. I love <laughs> that guy, gives me nightmares. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I would love another national championship to come back to Syracuse. I think the uh, the community would love it. It's, I'm sure West Virginia is the same, but like Syracuse loves their basketball. We just want one, we want one, in, <laughs> we want one in one of the two major sports because we don't have any. Yeah, no, that's fair. I guess we got one for both. I think one for football. Way back when Jim Brown was there, back in what, the fifties or whatever. Don't quote me yeah. on that. Yeah. I'm not hundred percent sure. I'm a I'm a poor Syracuse fan, I guess. I, I we should claim the one in 1922, but maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's too far. <laughs> yeah. Are I mean, uh, you guys rooting for uh, Miles McBride in the NBA playoffs? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'm did the Bulls make fans, it? Did so. the Bulls make it? By the way, I never did see. They uh, they beat the Hawks last night, so they're uh, they're gonna take on the Jimmy Butler l- less Heat tomorrow night. Because Javon Carter might get in too, but I'm not sure how much he'll actually play. He he, he hasn't been getting a lot of minutes. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, they've Kobe White's been a star for them lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have, have, did you shout out the sponsor, Paul? Did I? Yeah, I can't remember. Because Tosh mentioned it, mentioned it in the chat, so I just assumed. I probably forgot. There's just too much going on at the beginning of the show. Okay. I'm going to uh, – Dante, we're going to take about 40 seconds, man, if that's okay. You are good. I can head out and let you guys do your thing. Uh, now that we've talked about all the Illinois guys, hopefully hopefully I'll have some information, more information this weekend. Um, I was told to stay by my phone this weekend, gotcha. and uh, okay. I'll get fed. He'll feed me some information, maybe awesome. some photos. So we'll see. Okay. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. All right, man. We appreciate you coming on. Sorry again, I was late, but appreciate no, you. Uh, you are coming fine. on and joining Paul for the show, man. Of course, I appreciate you guys having me. Absolutely. All right, bro. Thank you. 
he's a good kid. He's a good guy. But you guys yeah. go follow Gante on X. He, he's uh, he's a good dude, and he's going to have a lot of info. So he might be, good, be a good follow for you. This episode of Hoops from the Hills is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com, or you can come in person today to the home of friends and family pricing. Only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. Hey, I appreciate everybody in the chat for always keeping us, always reminding us about that. Uh, yeah, you're good people. I don't care what anybody says. Well, you know, for this, just I'm sorry, I didn't mean to miss to do that. I was just, I was trying to get to thought. It was all happening so all fast. Right, you no know, worries. he agreed to come on, so that kind of sped me up. Right. Because I had to tell him a certain time, you know, and I couldn't wait for you really after because it was gonna get too late. Right. Yeah, I know. I forgot you. he was in I forgot he was an hour behind. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. I could have waited a little longer. But uh we we've we've it's not the first time we've done it. I know, but I hate this because you know, it's just we shouldn't. There you go, Jonathan. <laughs> He said he missed my LED lights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Is that better? <clears throat> so I didn't is even Pat know. Pat Pat has Pat Meets World in here? I haven't seen it. Is that his Why? name on here? I don't, so I don't, he asked me what time on X, and then I don't know if I've ever sent that. I'm not sure who Pat Meets World is, um, to be honest. He asked me what time we were going live on my X whenever I posted. Oh yeah, whenever I posted this, yeah. and I was just curious if he was in here because I don't if, know what his it, name it, is. If he he could be watching here, right? He could be watching, just not commenting too. Right. I was just curious what his name was. Yeah. That's all. But anyway, uh, thanks for doing this, man. Oh, yeah, no problem. I was excited to do it. Oh, okay, here we go. Look at that from Mark. That's awesome. Yeah. Mark, that's a really good job, man. Matthew thanks, Watkins. bro. Matthew Watkins, thanks for listening, man. We appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. That's okay, brother. Just stop and send your trooper chat whenever you get a time. That's the only two I know that I know about that are visiting. Um, your boy Drizzy, I, Paul. Do you know of any more visitors this weekend other than the two Illinois guys? Well, they've reached. Uh, I, we got a shot at. Let me see. Let me look at his name up real quick again. Uh, crap. Um, you, you'll have to talk about something else probably while I look at stuff real quick. Coos. No worries. I was uh, answering Timothy Green. He said he found out today how I got my nickname. It was in the fifth grade. So I was, oh, asking, yeah. I was asking him how he found out. And it, it was actually seventh grade, but fifth grade's close enough. It's still pretty, pretty darn close. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. I did. I posted. That's right. I did post that, didn't I, Timothy? I had forgot all about that. Uh, is Noah for sure stick? I uh, got a super chat here from Tanner Tracks Premier. Thank you, Tanner Tracks you Premier. Good. The, thank you, Doctor Bar. Yeah. Paul, I can hear that, man. Rob Wave. Steph Blur. Thank you. Thank you, Tanner Tracks from here for the super chat. He says, What are your thoughts on Noah F sticking around? 
Is that for is that confirmed? I haven't seen anything on it. He's gone. Huh? He's gone. Noah's gone. Yeah. Since when? Since Tony said he was going to leave on sports line today. Oh, okay. Gotcha. He just said he'd be surprised. He said off over is going to be the last man standing. I was planned on talking about that. I just uh, had, I, lost, I actually lost my train of thought on it. Just, I, in okay. the beginning of the show, I teased it and didn't fall through. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, well, thanks to Tanner Tracks Premier and his five dollars donation, we uh, he brought us back, circled us back to that. Yep. So apparently, he may not be sticking around. Tanner Tracks Premier. Uh, the way I understand it is the coaching staff's meeting with each player one at a time, and uh, I'll. Yeah, the guy from Jackson State is also – is he visiting this yeah, weekend? Well, I think they've got a shot to get him in, uh, gotcha. from what I understand. Now, he, he's, his, his tape is extremely impressive. So, uh, I saw another list. He averaged 18 points a game, five rebounds, and two assists last year. And his oh. list is this long, you know. So, yeah. at the end of the day, though, I mean, we, we have – the money and the playing time to offer these guys. We're at the land summit. Right. Right. Uh, but there was also a Missouri guy that we let's see. Uh Dante Dante's in the chat. He says he's checking it out from this side. Okay. Thank you, Dante. Yeah, Noah does have a great vertical, for sure. I think Noah. The biggest thing about Noah to me was he. I think he was having to play out of position a lot. And yeah, just, you know, he really wasn't. He wasn't even expecting to play this year, and I think he mentally may may not have been prepared to play. And then when he did play, you know, they just weren't. They never were really at. The team was never really at full strength, you know. Uh, so the, I don't know that the guys really ever had a fair shot to to display, you know, their true full abilities, if that makes sense. Missouri grad transfer John Tonch, T-O-N-J-E, mm -hmm. tells on three sports the following schools have been in contact since entering the portal. Iowa, West Virginia, Louisville, Baylor, Iowa State, Virginia, TCU, New Mexico, UC Santa Barbara, DePaul, Arizona State, and GCU. And this is him. Okay. He scored a thousand, scored a thousand seventy-two points in his career uh, between Colorado State and Missouri. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, Curtis brought it up in the chat as well. Okay. Josh Snow's too ball dominant. I don't see him fitting in with the new coaching staff. Just my opinion, but I hope he stays. Yeah, Tony. Tony Caridi already said he was gone. So I, I guess. Yeah, take that for what it's worth. It's probably so, he's probably gone. Sounds like it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I did too, Tosh. Yeah, me too. Me too. I liked him, and yeah. I thought he was. I thought he personally. I think he's a good fit for what DeVries likes to do. But yeah, but, but again, what I'm not, you know, that's just my opinion. And yeah. I think Oprah does too. Though, so I'm glad he's staying. If assuming he is, I mean, he could he could decide at any minute to change his mind. I guess. Yeah, but yeah, looks let's like hope he, he doesn't. Looks like the chances are he's staying. Yeah. Yeah, Drizzy. I think everybody's nervous, man. But hang in there. It's. I think Coach DeVries is extremely methodical, and he may move a little slow at times, but he's doing it. He moves slow because he's making sure he makes the right decision. Well, I mean, they've only had the staff here for a day, guys. Right, you know, just, right. I mean, and they're not even full staff yet, you know. So I think they've still got one or two guys they can hire. So let's just, you know, unfortunately, we're going to probably in a month we'll see where we're at, you know, and um, it's just going to be an everyday thing until then, I guess, you know. I, I'm uh, I'm totally speculating here, but I wonder, you know, there's been some rumors that Deshaun, Deshaun may keep end up being on the staff. No, obviously, I don't know that yet. That's just been rumored. But, oh, I, you yeah. know, he's, he's the one that recruited Ofrey, so I wonder if that tells us anything. 
I don't think, no offense to Ofri, I don't know if he's as good to hire somebody for, you know, but I don't, yeah, obviously I mean, Deshaun's good enough on his own to be a coach. I'm not saying that. What I, what I meant was maybe, maybe Ofri deciding to stay is a sign that, okay, maybe, that, that he didn't want to leave because maybe Deshaun, that's what I'm trying to say. If gotcha. Deshaun's, he may have decided to stay because Deshaun was staying. That's what I was trying gotcha. to get at. But again, that's total speculation on my part. I just don't throwing out a, a a theory. I think they go. Josh, to I could. Here. They do, yeah. They definitely do. Uh, Josh, that question there, I could not begin to answer, man. You know, because we don't have anybody on the roster. <laughs> um. You know, I'd it'd like it'd be like the it literally be it'd be worse than an eagle in a haystack. <laughs> you know, uh, give it some time. But sincere Edwards would be, as of right now, the closest thing, <laughs> and he's not even a point guard. So, uh, as of right now, man, it's we're not there yet. Yeah. Well, Lazo, I mean. Lazo, you know, he, he obviously doesn't like Ofri, but I mean, the coaching staff could have asked him to leave. They do have that option. So apparently they want him to stick around. To me, that tells me something. But maybe I'm wrong. I, I mean, look, I love, I love Ofri too. You know, and uh, I know, and so do the co uh, coaches I've talked to. So, I mean, he, he came from he came from overseas and had to learn the game in his first year here. Scored double figures uh, in the in Division One, you know, uh, after never played anything near that competition before. Uh, I don't know. I, I and I love his game. I really do. He, he's really fast. Uh, he's he's got he's got he's pretty quick to the rim. He's a lot more athletic than people give him credit for. Um, and he's got a jump shots you can definitely work with you know so mm -hmm. the, but the body the body type and everything is there he's already put on 30 pounds of muscle if you haven't seen the picture of him with the muscle yet it looks it looks impressive so um coach DeVries is like almost like a savant when it comes to knowing who will fit his system it's similar not the same but in a in a, the same vein as like Belichick who yep. knew exactly who to, would fit where because they'd run that same system for so long. It's all about body type, and, and, and you can pretty much just do they fit? Uh, do they do the things that that position does or doesn't do? And, uh, you know, until Ofri's, until Ofri's gone, I'm going to believe that he's believing in it, you know? But yeah. uh, at the end of the day, I guess Ofri's the only person that can prove us right or wrong. Very true. Very true. Indifferent. Ah, come on, man. And he doesn't have to be elite at anything. He can be good at a lot of things, which I think is the case. I think he's just a good, well-rounded basketball player. He can shoot it. He can he can pass it. He's decent on the defensive end once he puts you know gets bigger. Uh, he's athletic. Uh, like Handles I said, decent. Tony Tony said on Sportsline today that 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 no faircom is probably going to be gone. So it's one of those things that they can put the paperwork in; it doesn't show up for three days. So there's a few different things it can be, but um, you know, I, I've only heard what he said on Sportsline, so I haven't, you know. Been, told directly, but Tony Carady is more plugged in than any West Virginia sports writer or yeah. personality, anybody, you know, he, he gets it right from the horse's mouth. So I'm assuming that, or maybe he spoke to Noah, but um, his expectations that Oprah would be the, his exact words were Oprah would be the last man standing. So, yeah. Um, yeah Shaggy, I'm not going to say he's going to average 15 to 20 a game. I don't, I won't go that far. But I do think he'll be a, a, a player who can – and I've never said the guy's going to be a superstar or anything. 
But I do think he's a solid, can be a really solid player and contribute a lot to the team. That's all. I'm not saying he's going to be all American or all conference or anything like that, you know? Right. Yeah. I'm just, I've said my piece on it, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I just, keep, I'm not going to keep going back and forth on it. You know, I, I get it. We don't, we don't agree, and that's fine. Yeah. But anyway. I wish I wish Noah would stay. I really do. Me too. Me too. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that Tony's wrong. <laughs> I doubt he is, but let's hope he is. When did well, you say? When did you say? And that show was at six, right? So. Well, I mean, now listen. Uh, who reported it? Oh, uh, Brad. Voice of Morgan Town reported it, but it was a direct quote. Oh, gotcha. From, uh, from the show, you know what I gotcha, mean? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, huh. you know, that's the only yeah. place I've seen it. So, I mean, some yeah. people would say that's not credible, but I, I, I don't think he would just make that up. Um, this is an interesting. I, I see. I saw that somewhere too, Chris. Ryan Rusho said today, DeVries is going after someone that is currently an assistant, but has been a head coach in the last five to six years and someone that is the running for a head coach job. Do you, Paul, have you heard anything like that from your sources? I have. I've just been told not to mention it. You okay. Know? All right. Uh, sorry about that, Chris. I really am. Just certain things. I don't think it's just like with the chest, with the treasure thing. Uh, I found out now that they really didn't want that out there yet, <laughs> you know, which is why it took so long for it to happen. And I, um, so I, I think you and I were talking the other night that the only reason they probably finally came out with it was because Brad Underwood did, right? Yeah. Had Brad Underwood right. not said anything, West Virginia probably would never have announced it. Right. And so. maybe Brad did it because the players were transferred, right? Yeah. Like, no, you're not going to get away with not announcing it. You're going to make people going to know you took my players. I'm not saying that's what happened, but it can be interpreted that way. Yeah, he said Ryan also said that he couldn't say names. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because it's one of those, it's just one of them. I wish I could explain more, but um, because of things that have, it's just because of some things that have happened recently. Uh, with our players and you know stuff like that, so just give it time to breathe, man. And, uh, well, I'm sure news will come out one way or the other on it. Because uh, the la I, I haven't heard about it for a few days. I just forgot to be honest. But uh, it's not. Uh, I don't know if it's you know if it's still happening or what. Honestly, I have to check. I'm sure this is an issue at every program or most. And maybe I'm out of line here, but I, we have an, a very big problem within our fan base of people saying things and leaking it before it's supposed to be leaked. And it's not, and it's not people that you and I know doing it. Typically, I mean, it's not you know, it's not the mainstream media people. It's not the twenty four sevens, the rivals, the WV Sports Nows, the SIs. It's usually burner accounts. Uh, but to be honest, on on X that are doing this kind of stuff. Um, and to me, it, it can be, uh, what's well, what I'm looking for? A lot of times they're former coaches, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for. Um, the opposite of productive, you know? Um, right. To, to what the staff's trying to do. Counterproductive. Counterproductive. It's counterproductive <laughs> to what the staff may be trying to do, you know? There's a reason they're not leaking stuff out. But yet these people, because they want to get follows on Twitter, are putting stuff out that aren't supposed to, isn't supposed to be out there. And it just – sometimes I get frustrated at that stuff, man. But anyway, I don't want to get on – Because there's lines. no consequences for them, really, you know. Yeah. But I don't I don't want to – I don't want to get – I don't want to go on a soapbox. Yeah. When did the portal close? Is that what they're asking? Uh, Yeah. Larry Butcher asked, when does the portal close for this season? Uh, I, I believe it's, it's open for 30, it was open for 30 days. So, uh, whenever it opens 30 days from then, I, I honestly ain't sure. 
Uh, I mean, look. Yeah, Tosh, in some cases it is more money, but, I mean, you know, there are times Paul and I could leak stuff too, but we don't, you know. Uh, but but a lot of the people leaking his stuff isn't making any money from it. They're just doing it for – I don't know why they're doing it, to be honest. I'm not sure what they get from it. April 30th, it says. I mean, a burner account on X, what are they getting for leaking information? Nothing? Uh, Notoriety. Well, unless, uh, unless, they're, unless they're paid for a check mark. You know, you can be a burner account and still have a check mark. Yeah, know? maybe. I don't know. You can. You don't have to have your real name as your profile name. Mm -hmm. You know, they know it, but it's not being shared with the public. You know what I'm saying? They verified you are who you are, then you can call yourself whatever. Yeah. So, so you you drive up uh, people watching or looking at your stuff. You can make money from it that way. Right. I don't know if that's the case here. You know what we're talking yeah. about. And I don't. But, I'm, I'm not, I don't even. And I'm not even talking about this specific situation. I'm just talking about in general. It's it happens a lot in our fan base. Uh, no, Larry, uh, the way it'll work is on April 30th, the portal will close. That means no more players can enter besides graduate transfers. Uh, and then we'll have the ability to still schedule visits. They'll have, they'll have periods of dead and uh, dead periods and stuff though, here and there. Uh, and, and there'll be, you know, certain amount of visits you can have, whatever, but, um, uh, as long as they're already in the portal, you can have them. You can have them. It doesn't matter after April 30th or not. You can have them on campus for visits, and also they can commit. Uh, now, like I said, there will be times where they won't be able to come on visits, but they can still commit, you know, and that does happen too. So it's just all about getting them to campus now so they can see it uh, or doing it like, you know, virtual. But you could probably do virtual. I don't know if that's considered a visit or not. Whether you know, but anyway, no, it doesn't have to be done by April thirtieth. It just closes. People can no longer enter. Yeah. Yep. As long as you're in the portal by the thirtieth, you can you can sign at any time. You just have to be in it, like Paul said. Yeah. Uh, how many freshmen will the roster have, Jonathan? Two or three, probably. Uh, probably not many. I mean, KJ Tanner obviously is the one. He's already signed. And there's a couple more yeah, that they're I mean, recruiting. But I, I I don't know. Two or three, Paul? If, will there be that many? What's the over under? Well, I mean, what's the over under on freshmen? That's a good actually a good good way to I'd probably I'd probably say four. Four would be a good number. Because they're recruiting a lot of high school players right now. They've got offers out to two that I know of. Uh, that's not and then Tanner's already here. If Jace Butler comes, that would be one. Um, Hansbury and uh, Sincere Harris are both basically freshmen. They're not, but, I mean, they ain't got a lot of time in their belt. They're not what you consider older players. So it's uh, – I would imagine that they're going to shift really heavy to older players or, or at least, you know, older players um, pretty soon. Yep. Once they get a certain amount. But I would say four or three, like you said. You can't take much more than that. No, no, because they need to win now. And unless, unless the well, not necessarily. Well, you know, because it, that's what that's what uh, somebody I can't say who now. I got scolded for saying somebody's name on the show the other day, but um, somebody told me the other day that um, that this guy, you know, Coach DeBreeze thinks long term all the time. Every single thing he's doing is long term. So, gotcha. Take that for what it is, too. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, not like the, the pressure to win this year is there, 100% there. But he, he's making a lot of these decisions he's making is definitely long term. You know, I'm sure they'll give him some runway. Yeah, you got to. We're, we're not Kentucky, you know. <clears throat> well, I mean, that's that strategy. Just don't remember what am I breaking down on that strategy? You just don't win anymore because people are getting paid to stay in college long. Yeah, teams are old. You used to be able to win with freshmen because people were leaving. You know, after uh, after a certain time, you go to the NBA. You only had to play one year in college, and then you could go to the NBA. Still like that. Yeah. Uh, in basketball, not in football, you got to be uh, you got to be over twenty one. But 
right uh in in college basketball you just have to play one year so why is it more people leaving because they're getting paid to stay you know so it's not the same as it was when calipari won with five freshmen yeah well i think um, it was four freshman starters or five freshman yeah, starters four or five yeah i can't remember you got anything I, I, else goose I, I don't man i was going to ask you the same thing i can, listen i can read you like a book that's why i said that you said, well i was tell by your body I, I i could read your yours earlier so i could tell you're getting tired so and and i've only been home a few minutes before i jumped on here so i still got a few things i need to need to get plenty to. of gas maybe plenty of gas in the tank but yeah I, I mean i'm pretty much out of out of things to say believe it or not I keep dropping this phone i need something to set it on while i'm here yep we'll call it a night timothy lazel everybody thanks y'all for hopping on here uh it's been a great show even though i was late what part i was on here for was great and I'm sure the first 30 minutes, 20 minutes were great too. So, but yeah, hit the like on the way out, please. And if you're watching it on the replay, hit the like, subscribe, comment, share it with you, share it with your friends, let them know about hoops from the hills. And we're not going anywhere. And we're going to continue to cover this coaching search, the, the uh, roster additions, all that stuff. So thank you. Also, you for your support. Mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry. Uh, go check out my video I did on Rodney Gallagher today, guys. Yes. It's a pretty good one. Um, he, he's, uh, he's going to be a two, hopefully a two way player for us. I made the threat the, the, the obvious Travis Hunter comparison on that. So go over to Mountaineer Paul talks football and check that video out. If y'all get time, do it, to it, do it, to it. Appreciate y'all. Thanks again. We're done.